Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso, and today we're going to talk about a new proposal from the FESB around joint venture accounting. Now, this is a pretty interesting uh, proposal because it is going to settle some diversity in practice. Um, there isn't a lot of guidance around uh, joint ventures, uh, and this is really not looking to amend the definition of a joint venture. It's not looking to make changes um, around the accounting for contributions to a joint venture after its formation. But what it is starting to take a look at is recognition and initial measurement when we are setting up a joint venture. So when two organizations come together to create this um, new joint venture and they contribute items to it, um, there isn't a lot of gap in this area. And so a lot of this comes uh, has led to diversity in practice. And so this was issued on October 22nd. Comments are due on December 22nd. Uh, and again, this really comes from a lack of guidance. Um, so there is guidance in GAP that explicitly provides that transactions between a corporate joint venture and its owners are not within the scope of topic 845, which is non-monetary transactions, and that formation is outside the scope of topic 805 business combinations. So they tell you what you can't do, but there wasn't a lot of guidance of what you should do. And so over the years, the SEC has provided through speeches uh, some guidance, but again, significant diversity in practice. Some people upon formation are looking at the items that have been contributed and booking them at fair value, similar to what you would do in a business combination. Um, others are carrying it over at their carrying amount that they have um, for their, uh, you know, for what the asset was on their books. And so this diversity in practice um, was something that the FASB was trying to, um, you know, adjust. And so to reduce that diversity in practice, they are going to make some changes uh, and require um, a little bit of um, more consistency in this area. And so it is going to require the joint venture to apply a new basis of accounting upon formation. So you're not going to carry over your existing uh, valuation. Uh, you're typically going to apply um, um, assets and liabilities at their fair value. Now, there are some exceptions similar to the exceptions that we have in business combination accounting here. And so you would initially measure those at the uh, fair value uh, of what is being contributed. Um, and that should obviously reduce the diversity in, in practice. Now, the effect basically is you would get some basically fresh start accounting um, that is under topic 852 for reorganizations. And again, it's pretty consistent with the guidance that you would see in um, acquisition accounting as well. Now, there are differences from business combinations because simply we don't have an acquirer, right? So these two organizations are choosing to work together to create a new organization, but um, there's not an acquirer or an acquiree. Um, it, when we are doing this, it is going to be the new joint venture will measure its identifiable net assets and goodwill, uh, if any, at, at the formation date. And the initial measure of the joint venture's total net assets would be equal to the fair value of the 100% of the joint venture's outstanding equity interests. Uh, and so again, they do have some really interesting guidance in here uh, to, again, try to reduce that diversity in practice. So if you have a lot of joint ventures and you're trying to do this accounting uh, to create some consistency, this would be a great opportunity to provide feedback to the FASB. They do have questions around goodwill, around having a new basis to start. Um, and so they would really love some feedback in this area. Uh, they have not proposed an effective date. They basically are waiting to see what the feedback is from this one. Uh, and so they decided, uh, decided that the effective date would come back after they got some feedback. Um, they did say that they would look at that prospectively um, as they look at the, um, the process and that joint ventures form before the effective date would have the option to elect this retrospectively. So um, if you entered into this and you didn't use that basis, they would let you basically true it up. All right, so short and sweet to the point, um, but always a fun one to get to into as we try to reduce that diversity in practice and bring more consistency between organizations. So thank you guys so much for joining us today on the Genuine Learning Blog, and we hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.